Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Before we start, I would like to draw your attention to what I can offer you as a master coach. I can help you to focus on your why with clarity, uniting your passion with your purpose with a plan to create the life you truly desire. Book a free 20-minute coaching call right now via calendly.com forward slash Amy Rowlandson forward slash call and we can take it from there. Hello and welcome to episode 286. This is my 45th Reflections with Actions for Focus on Why. And if you're new to the show, welcome and thank you for tuning in. What is a Reflections with Actions episode all about, you wonder? Well, it's an opportunity for you and me to reflect on the last five episodes and see what were the key takeaways from the episode without any spoilers, just in case you haven't listened to it yet. And maybe fancy going back and tuning in after hearing some of these insights. Okay, well, June 2022 saw me drop down to just one episode a week, and I have to say, I've really missed the recordings. However, it has enabled me to crack on with some other great areas, such as new leadership and an empowerment course that I've taken on called Lead the Change with Dr. Joanna Martin and the One of Many community. And I have my first three-day retreat next week, and I'm really looking forward to what I will discover about myself and the world as the theme is Be Love which sounds amazing. Love is a central theme for Focus on Why. One wonderful podcast conversation I recorded back in 2020, which is episode 129, Unconscious Competence with diversity and inclusion expert Jackie Handy. We spoke of, or she spoke of the importance and the impact of love and belonging in the world. We each look for connection, seek a sense of belonging and the feeling that we are loved. Love is different for all of us. You have an abundance of love within you, ready to share freely with others. It was Sophocles who said that one word frees us of all the weight and pain of life. That word is love. Wouldn't it be great if we could all just spread a little love around? Who would benefit from hearing your words or acts of love? Take an opportunity to spread your love today. Love and be loved. So let's dive into today's first reflection, episode 281, Start With Yourself with Abigail Langridge. Are you stressed? Constantly spinning plates, juggling different roles and being pulled in many different directions, perhaps heading towards burnout. You might not even slow down enough to recognise that this is where you are heading. Staring out of the hospital window just after the birth of her third child, Abigail Langridge knew that to avoid burnout and mum guilt, she had to leave her corporate life behind her and create what she felt she needed for others. Support for the administration of life, professionally and personally. With a vision as clear as a picture postcard, Abigail scooped up the idea of Mary Poppins and brought her into the modern day. What a stroke of genius that was supporting high-achieving women to reclaim their personal life and to alleviate their headspace of all the things that help keep them awake at night and interrupt them throughout the day. Abigail says that the first step to take is to start with yourself. Once people start to actually dedicate time for themselves and reap the benefits, they then realise they see the flip side and that's where their lives really start to change. Once they get that personal element back, they're relaxing into their work. They can prioritise better. They're a better leader. They're a better colleague. It's a much better flow when you start with yourself, says Abigail. Abigail brings the true essence of having a personal assistant alive, tailoring her support to each person. Poppins PA has been created from a place of longing and for wanting each woman to realise why they do what they do, ensuring these women are supported as individuals in order for them to show up as their best selves professionally. As Abigail said, we're all saying yes to everything, which is great, but we're never at the top of your own to-do list. She recommends that you put yourself at the top of your to-you list instead. If you were to start writing a to-you list, what would be on it? More importantly, what's at the top of the list and focus on that first today and perhaps start using a filter to protect your time more. It's good to say yes to opportunities as long as they go through your focus on why filter and are aligned with your values. 
I've taken a conscious step back in many areas recently. The number of podcast recordings has been one of them. And I'm retiring the superwoman who was not serving me so well. In fact, she was leading me straight to a place of burnout. It is important to focus on you first and to focus on the time you apportion to which areas in your life, even if that is time to focus on nothing. So with these two themes of you and nothing, here are my reflections from Abigail's episode. Do you love you? Do you know what it is you truly want in life and why? Maya Angelou said that the real difficulty is to overcome how you think about yourself. With nothing more than a leap of faith, a dash of hope and a sprinkle of courage, I took the plunge and created the Focus on Why podcast to answer and address these questions. The lesson I found was to first understand the connection that you have deep within yourself to then understand the connectedness you have with others. It is your responsibility to focus on you, to love yourself and to believe that you are enough. Self-love and self-care are not selfish. They are a necessity. They demonstrate a high level of understanding of your own well-being and happiness. You can't pour from an empty cup. Take care of yourself before you can help others. Burnout, stress and overwhelm are not badges of honour. Use your natural effervescence to fuel your life. Self-love is about being true to you. Unleash the brilliance within and believe that you are worthy, that you are enough already and you do not need to seek any external validation to justify this. Do you understand who you are and what your uniqueness offers to the world? When you are at peace with yourself, you are practicing self-love. When you love yourself, you will have more inclination and energy to love others. Prioritize you, be true to yourself to live an authentic life. Diana, Princess of Wales, said that every one of us needs to show how much we care for one another and in the process, how much we care for ourselves. Do you find it easy to accept compliments, gifts, time, generosity or attention from others? If you show deep self-love and self-worth, all these will come naturally, enabling others to also show self-love too. Charlie Mackesy said that being kind to yourself is one of the greatest kindnesses. We often wait for kindness, but being kind to yourself can start now. Self-care is a way to practice self-love. It encompasses all the acts of nurturing your physical, mental and emotional well-being. How do you practice self-care? In no particular order, here are some suggestions. Sleep. Relax. Eat healthily. Food is fuel. Exercise to boost your endorphins. Practice forgiveness. Seek out fulfilling work. Watch the sunrise and sunset. Sing, dance, smile and laugh. Practice daily positive affirmations. Journal away negative thoughts. Acknowledge them and rewrite them as positive statements. Practice gratitude daily. Check your inner dialogue. Be kind to yourself. Change your thoughts by changing your language. Practice mindfulness. Learn and grow. Find your happy place where you feel at ease and calm and keep a book of all your wins, strengths, achievements, best qualities and opportunities. Be patient and persistent. Your time and energy are your most precious resources. Be mindful how you use them and protect them. Say no to things that are not needed in your life to preserve your boundaries. Show people how they are to treat you by showing them how you treat yourself. Love yourself and you will be loved. Practice self-care and self-love today. Listen to you, respect you and focus on you. Recently, on a coaching call, recognising that I was overloading my workload, my coach, Kat, suggested to me to focus on nothing. What? Nothing, I almost snorted. How is that even possible? Surely you're always doing something. Kat insisted it was possible and that I very much needed to rest and replenish myself. So what does nothing look feel, smell, taste and sound like? Well, actually pretty good if I'm being honest. I didn't realise that nothing was such a great thing and yes, Kat, thank you, I really did need a prescription of nothing. In fact, nothing works wonders. You should definitely try it out. The maxim less is more sprang to my mind. However, I let the thought pass on by. I held a space for myself to just focus on being calm and restful. It was a beautiful time and I really appreciated why my coach had suggested it. If you're like me, living in a noisy, busy, frantic world, often feeling the pull to do something productive 24-7, adopting that don't waste a second attitude of life, then feel free to give yourself permission to also do nothing. 
And if you're thinking that you don't have the time to do nothing, then take a moment to understand what the implications and repercussions are in having that exact thought. I empowered myself to rest and not to strive to achieve anything except nothing. I hadn't recognised quite how much my mind had been racing in all directions until I slowed it and my breathing right down. Ironically, I guess, this means that I was still being productive in another sense. I switched off my phone and stared into the distance. Embracing nothing was positively welcomed. It definitely helped that I was sitting on the beach of the south coast of England at the time. However, now, as I write this, I'm sat in my garden in the sunshine by the beautiful jasmine that I planted 10 years ago, about to focus on nothing once more. So if you're finding yourself rushing around filling in all the spare moments you have, know that a prescription of nothing is free to prescribe yourself at any time and will provide you with infinite returns in terms of your mental health, bringing you an abundance of rejuvenation and replenishment. Go on, treat yourself, focus on nothing. Next up is episode 282, Serve Your Purpose with Sue Richardson. Sue is a member of the PSA and I bid for some time with her at a charity auction back in 2021 and it was a wonderful time that I spent with her talking about the book, or should I say books, that I wish to write. Grabbing a book out of her mother's hand and teaching herself to read at the age of three, Sue Richardson began her lifelong love affair for books. Captivated by the magic, Sue has built her publishing business around her love for books and has created a world which enables others to expand their worlds. If you want to know how Sue could help you write the right book which will honour you and your authentic self as the author and serve your purpose, then episode 282 is the one for you to tune into. An accomplished and renowned publisher, Sue is not only the founder and director of The Right Book Company, she also leads the team and gets personally involved with every project. After nearly 30 years working in publishing, Sue's vast experience and expertise are second to none. Having witnessed time and time again the power of a book to elevate and accelerate the success of many a business owner turned author, Sue created her own publishing company that puts world-class quality, the highest standards and the hopes, dreams and goals of the author at the heart of everything it does. Sue says that her purpose is to enable and empower people to tell their stories in such a way that they transform their own world and that of others. It's amazing how a book can transport you into a magical world, into a space and time far away from where you are now, where your imagination can wander free and where there is an abundance of opportunities. This place does exist for each of us. It is just a moment away, created through a handful of words. That's the power of ink on a page. That's the power of the spoken word too. Sue says that we all have a book inside us. If that is true, what is a book that you have inside you? More importantly, does your book have a heart? I asked Sue if she can recall her first book. She spoke of how she remembers being captivated by Dr. Zeus's Green Eggs and Ham. Yes, I am. By the adventures of Ransoms, Swallows and Amazons and the world of Narnia created by C.S. Lewis. I remember the magic of stories as a child and would curl up in a corner of my bedroom on a beanbag for hours and hours reading. In fact, I don't recall many moments when I didn't have a book in hand, just in case there was a down moment that I could snatch a page or two during my day. It's still the case now. I'm always carrying a book and if you count the Kindle and Audible apps on my phone, I would have at least three or four books on the go at any one time. And this weekend I read Fish, a book that Sue had referenced in her episode. Have you read Fish? It's only a short read with a powerful message conveyed through a parable that is designed to help you to love the work that you do, even if you can't do the work that you love. Written by Stephen C. London, Harry Paul and John Christensen, you're transported to the world-famous Pike Place fish market in Seattle. It's a real place. And you'll not be surprised to hear that the book is about love not about selling fish. Although, if that is your trade, then you may learn a lesson or two about that too. I've also bought Fish Sticks, Fish Tales and Fish for Life, which are the follow-on books which share stories of how people have implemented the fish philosophy into their organisations with great success to not only boost morale, but to work cohesively and improve results. And if you're more of a visual person and want to see how much fun they have at Pike Place in Seattle, then either watch the videos or put it on your to-do list and head over in person to witness a fish being thrown over your head in Seattle. 
other books that Sue and I spoke of in this episode was On Writing by Stephen King and The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. On Writing, a memoir of the craft, is a brilliant example of how to knit the genius of storytelling with teaching. Stephen King said that if you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others. Read a lot and write a lot. Every book you pick up has its own lesson or lessons, and quite often the bad books have more to teach than the good ones. So there it is. Stephen King has given both you and me full permission to read, to write a lot and read a lot. What do you read and what do you write about? I read a lot of non-fiction with an occasional fictional novel too, especially if I'm on holiday. I write weekly newsletters, blogs, speeches, stories, emails, journal entries, podcast show notes, social media posts, letters and scripts. And since studying the science and history behind communication at university for my linguistics degree, I continue to be fascinated by writing and how writing differs in its many forms. Every day I focus on a different type of writing. How about you? How does writing feature in your life and work? And if you need some help about creative writing, dive into The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and start writing morning pages. Sue said that morning pages had taught her so much about the way that we stop ourselves and how to allow our creativity to flow. It's like a journal. A journal is an honest reflection or a snapshot of how you feel at that exact moment in time, showing growth and learning over time, helping you to remember all the smaller moments, not just the big events. Writing daily in the moment means that you can't modify your memory, as you so often tend to do. It's written there in black and white. It's an opportunity to share your vulnerabilities, your inspirations and your aspirations all on the same page. Each day by sharing your gratitude, your concerns, your fears, your doubts, your achievements, you project a balanced picture of your life. A journal is a great opportunity to keep track of your goals and visualise your future whilst improving your communication and writing skills. It's brilliant to get your ideas out of your head and onto paper. You can also use a journal to write down key learnings from books that you've read or seminars you've attended. Recording them will help you to remember them. So journaling around your reflections and observations enables you to listen to yourself to make informed decisions and wise choices. Writing down experiences gives you perspective and clarity around circumstances. It reduces your stress levels, helps you to problem solve and keep present. There are so many different ways to journal, but remember journaling is unique to you. Choose your own way. Start journaling today and reap the rewards it provides. I advocate living versus existing and to take that to the next level, how about trying creative living? Elizabeth Gilbert wrote in her book Big Magic about creative living, living a creative life, an amplified life. I never promised the universe that I would be a great writer, God damn it, she said. I just promised the universe that I would be a writer. Giving myself permission to focus on writing each day is taking me ever closer to writing my first book. And I'm mindful of the advice from Elizabeth Gilbert that the majority of people who start writing a book don't follow it through to completion. It can be said of a lot of things. People start something, but they don't see it through to completion because of the effort involved. That's what happens with podcasts. They often suffer from pod fade and disappear. If you have a book inside you and Sue says that you do, then I'm curious as to what's stopping you from writing it now. Next up is episode 283, Professional Relationships with Andy Lapata. In today's business world, connection is vital, yet on its own, connecting is not enough. It's one step in the process of building genuine relationships with others. Known as one of Europe's leading business networking strategists by the Financial Times and a true master of networking by the independent and Forbes.com, Andy Lapata is a specialist in networking and professional relationships. Andy says it's the strong relationships that will introduce you to the weaker ties who will open those doors for you. Whatever we're trying to achieve, we can do it more easily with other people's support. So let's have some purpose behind that. Weaker ties, opening doors. What does Andy mean? I hadn't heard of this and neither had several of my listeners. So I went back and checked it out. Weak tie theory was formed by Nick Granovetta back in 1973 and deals with the spread of information across networks. The principle being that distant acquaintances are more influential than close friends, particularly in social networks. Granovetta spoke of strong, weak and absent ties. 
A strong tie is formed with someone who is close to you, perhaps a close friend or family member. Strong communities built on similar values and with shared opinions and viewpoints. A weak tie is considered a bridge between networks. They are distant social relationships that are formed between acquaintances or even strangers, and they tend to be responsible for the majority of the spread of information and the structure of social networks in society. People who have large groups of followers with their impact and influence being spread across their connections form the majority of your weak ties and play a critical role. An absent tie are the connections that you think exist between people, but they actually don't. This would be where you think two people in industry know one another, but they don't. A 2014 study found that weak ties have a positive impact on our well-being and that the more weak ties a person has, the happier they feel and a greater sense of belonging. There's a link to this study in the show notes. In his article, The Strength of Weak Ties, Granovetta focused on the spread of information through social networks in person. And it's fascinating how this has somewhat changed over the last 40 plus years with the use of online networking circles, how it has magnified the importance of weak ties in today's world. Andy said that connecting is not enough and that connecting is misunderstood. He said that people are told to join LinkedIn, for example, because everyone's doing it and suggests it, but they don't think why they're there. And he says that we need purpose in that activity if it's going to underpin our success. And is a great believer that strong professional relationships underpin the success of anything you want to do. Are you okay? Are you feeling connected, not only to others, but also connected to yourself? As a life purpose coach and podcaster, I am a bridge builder, connecting people together from different cultures to understand purpose in everyday life. I aspire to build a better life and a better world for everyone through our connectedness. We're all in this together. We are, after all, just pieces of one giant jigsaw of life. There's strength in our solidarity, so stay connected and focus on connection. Despite technical advances in life, human behaviour and connection hasn't really changed much over the millennia as we still seek that belonging and purpose in life. The connections we form with the people around us, the stories we share and how we communicate our messages and the fundamental understanding of human connection all lie at the heart of the stories. Being human, you're wired for positive connection and the need to be social for all aspects of your well-being. In every sense, you have a desire to connect and establish rapport within a close community. You build this connection through trust, happiness and consistency. Digital connectivity is not the same as physical connection. Born from a disconnection of one business partnership, Focus on Why has gone on to create hundreds and thousands of new connections. It's been over two years now since its conception. Where has that time gone? 286 episodes later, been an incredible show full of ripple effects and new connections. Eckhart Tolle spoke of only one thing is of absolute importance and that is your connectedness with being. The concept of six degrees of separation has always fascinated me as well. That we're all connected by just six or less connections and this theory is now thought to have been reduced to just three connections as social networks and technology have brought us even closer together. Essentially, we are all a friend of a friend and we're all connected in one way or another. Who could you reach out to and connect with today? A friend, a family member, a business connection? What will you say or do to strengthen your connection? What are the weaker ties that you have that you could build your connectedness with others more? Have you heard of Austrian psychotherapist Alfred Adler? If you've ever read The Courage to be Disliked or The Courage to be Happy, both written by Ichiro Kishimi and Fumitaki Koga, they centre on the work of Adler, that the key principle is that all problems are interpersonal problems, as a human being's existence assumes existence of other human beings. Well, if all problems are interpersonal problems, then I'm curious as to, could it be that the case that all successes are also linked to interpersonal relationships? Could this be extended to professional relationships? I believe so. Andy certainly believes that professional relationships are crucial. Whatever we're trying to achieve, we can do it more easily with other people's support. So let's have some purpose behind that, he said. Remember through the statement of all problems are interpersonal problems. That's where issues surrounding inferiority, comparison, judgment, recognition and rewards and separation of tasks come into play. This is a reminder that your actual job in life is not the profession you pursue. Your job is to focus on only what you are able to affect control over, to focus on your tasks and not the tasks of others. 
A lot of stress in life comes from living in other people's mental spaces, living outside of your own mental living, expecting others to do things is exhausting and futile. By saying this should not have happened or you need to do this or people should do this becomes overwhelming and untenable. If you want to progress, focus only on your tasks. To enhance your professional relationships, stay on task, stay authentic and connect with people on a human level. Next up is episode 284, The Genius Maker with Lizette Offley. Firstly, a thank you goes to Mark Lee for our introduction. On a mission to help more women into the professional services industry and to support those already there by addressing exam and confidence challenges, Lizette Offley recognises that success often comes at a cost. When you get to the top as an ultra successful, powerful person, it can prove to be a very lonely place which is why you will recognise the value of continual personal development and effectiveness training and support. Lizette's work has been classified as a game changer and the missing link by leading educationists and is the must-have training for professional people who need leading-edge strategies for passing exams easily, managing their mindset and leveraging their time, massively expanding their career and earning prospects. Essentially, Lizette is the genius maker, Do you wish to let go of procrastination, imposter syndrome, anxiety or perfectionism? Well, of course you do. Who wants to hold on to those toxic concepts? Lizette says you can make the changes you need to get the results that you need. You have more options. You've always got more options than you think. With the right sort of help, you can break through wherever it is you're on to whatever it is you want to do. Lizette is the genius maker, but she said that we're all geniuses, and I've been reflecting on this ever since. Are we all geniuses? What is a genius? Typically someone who's exceptionally intelligent or has an exceptional gift or creative power in a particular area or activity. If I ask you to name a genius, who springs to your mind? Einstein, Shakespeare, Mozart, Picasso or Beethoven? Very likely, at least one of those names came up as they're all people you would depict as a genius. How about Duckworth? She's a genius despite being told by her father when she was a young girl that she was not. Duckworth knew plenty of people smarter than her. In her third grade, she didn't test high enough to score for the gifted and talented programme. Yet, that same girl who was told she was not a genius ended up winning an award for being one. Author of Grit, Dr. Angela Duckworth was awarded the MacArthur Fellowship, often dubbed the Genius Grant, by a secret committee made up of the top people in the field of psychology, because she discovered that what we eventually accomplish may depend more on our passion and perseverance than our innate talent. Genius. What does it actually take to be a genius? Are there familiar traits that characterise a genius? Do you have what it takes to be called a genius? If you have a deep curiosity for the world, a strong courage of conviction, the ability to challenge your thinking, a desire to push through boundaries to take risks, an ability to apply deep focus, then yes, you absolutely can be a genius. Manmeet Kaur Chowdhury, Tony J. Salimi, Pete Lonton, Helen Pollock, Mel Sherwood, Catherine Watkin, Mel Luizu, Kate Trafford, Rob Moore, Peter Freeth, Marcus Kauke and Julie Crefield as guests on Focus of Why have all spoken of what they believe it takes to be a genius. Helen Pollock in episode 131 specifically spoke of the loss of potential and the crime of consequences of not sharing your genius and knowledge as an author. Tony J. Salimi in episode 151 spoke of unshakable genius and how to awaken it within us. Mamit Kaur Chowdhury said in episode 81, A Life by Design, that we all have a genius within us and our genius is displayed in our highest priorities. No matter what we do, we're inspired from within. We never actually need extrinsic motivation to get us to do that. Gay Hendricks, in his book, The Big Leap, identifies four different zones that you function in. The zone of incompetence, the zone of competence, the zone of excellence and the zone of genius. As with purpose and your thumbprint, your zone of genius is completely unique to you. Where you blend your passion with your natural gifted talents and skills and where you are most in flow doing what comes effortlessly to you. This is your zone of genius. Imagine combining your zone of genius with your purpose and you took consistent focused action. It would make you an unstoppable force to be reckoned with. Remember, you can achieve whatever you desire if you set your heart and mind on it and apply yourself. You can be the genius you choose to be. What do you have an innate talent for? 
And are you maximizing its potential? Listen to your inner genius, step into your zone of genius, and whatever you do, focus on genius. Lisette said that the idea that you can learn and grow and keep moving forward is what lights her up, that being part of that with someone else to help them have those insights, those aha moments, those paradigm shifts, breaking through to the next level and seeing the joy that they're experiencing is great. And it's what gets her out of bed every day. As you grow and learn, the secret to living with purpose is found within the questions you ask yourself and in how you frame and reframe those questions. Let me ask you a simple question. What gets you out of bed in the morning? Do you know the answer? Perhaps it's not such a simple question after all. My final reflection for today is episode 285, Forgive Your Past with Maria Guimarães. Another thank you for the introduction goes to the wonderful Olga Gaidana, my guest from episode 59, Follow Your Heart. What is the meaning of our human existence? Why do you exist? Questions you will have undoubtedly have posed in life. However, how about being told that you should not exist? How would that make you feel? Experiencing physical and verbal abuse from her mother and told that she should not exist, Maria Guimaraes mastered the art of becoming invisible as a child, masking all the pain, suffering and abuse. Fighting to exist all her life, Maria then found her turning point and through transformation of coaching, she found her why. Sharing her message that suffering is a struggle that makes us mentally strong, Maria exists to help others to forgive their past and to live in the present. Maria supports professionals to overcome their insecurities and invisibility, to develop the power of their mental strength. Her life purpose is to help others to find their inner powers. Maria learned how to live in the present and make peace with what has happened in the past. Can you imagine being told that you should not exist? Not just once, but over and over and over by your own mother. Maria dealt with this trauma and reframed her life and thoughts through forgiveness. The moment we forgive our past is the moment we start living our present, she said. Interestingly enough, this is where Adler pops up again, as in Adlerian psychology. Trauma is definitively denied. He says that no experience is in itself a cause of our success or failure. We do not suffer from the shock of our experiences, the so-called trauma, but instead we make of them whatever suits our purposes. We are not determined by our experiences, but the meaning we give them is self-determining. With this in mind, you choose to make of your experiences what suits your purposes. This is where the reframing and forgiveness comes in. Regardless of what happened to Maria as a child, she found that she had a choice to reframe the suffering she was exposed to, and only she had the power to do that. You choose how you decide to live, no one else. This is explored at length in the book, The Courage to be Disliked, which I recommend. This conversation of forgiveness reminds me of what Nigel Risner had to say in episode 84 the power of forgiveness, as he shared that his whole purpose and speaking career is focused on forgiveness and referenced that resentment is like taking poison and hoping the other person dies. Making a conscious decision to release resentment towards someone, regardless of whether they deserve your forgiveness or not, will release you feeling imprisoned by your own feelings. Are you holding yourself prisoner right now? Nigel Risner went on to say that if you can understand the power of forgiveness, if you can communicate really well, if you know why you do what you do and if you're willing to have some fun in what you're doing, life seems to work pretty well. If you focus on your why, you focus on your biggest strength, you focus on what needs to be done. And if you really worked on your strengths more than your weaknesses, it's much more fun. Well said, Nigel. I completely agree. So what is it about forgiveness that requires you to let go of any thoughts or feelings around revenge? Well, if you don't, the amount of energy both mentally and emotionally that is involved in not letting go starts to build and is likely to escalate into anger, negativity, stress and poor health. When you let it go through forgiveness, you are the one who benefits most. You cannot change the past. However, you can control how you feel in the moment now and in moving forward. Be strong and let it go. You get to choose how you think, feel and act. Reach out for help, as Maria said. There is always help available if you need it. Then it's a case of trusting and forgiving yourself, forgiving others, making peace and letting go. In the wise words of the Disney classic Frozen, let it go. How has this conversation had an impact on you? What value have you received from tuning in? What are your reflections with actions? 
please take a moment to leave me an Apple podcast or Spotify review sharing how Focus on Why has made a difference to you today. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. To keep it going, simply connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter or join the Focus on Why Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.